In this video, we're going to continue our work with connected particles and look at problems involving trailers and cars. Let's start off by modelling this up. I'm going to have a car and I'm going to say that the car is pulling a trailer. We'll say the mass of the car, let's just put a number on here, let's say it was 300 kilograms. So the car is 300 kilograms. We're going to have resistance to motion and we'll say the resistance to motion is going to be, let's say, 400 newtons. We will have a driving force on the car and we can say the driving force, let's say that's going to be 5,000 newtons. And we'll say now that the car is accelerating forward at a meters per second squared. This is going to be pulling a trailer and we're going to say that the trailer is being pulled by a light tow bar. So we've looked at light in previous videos. Light means it's going to add negligible mass to my particular diagram or my model and we're going to have equal tension in that tow bar. So let's give the trailer a mass. So we'll say the mass is going to be equal to 100 kilograms. I'll say there's going to be resistances to motion. So we'll say now that that's going to be 200 newtons. So what I'm going to do is draw this up. So if I draw this up, let's draw a quick sketch of what's going on here. We're going to have now, and I'll put this on a, a flat, uh, flat plane to begin with. We're going to have the car, so let's put the car just here. And of course, we're always modelling these as particles. And we're going to have the trailer here. So let's just put these on. I prefer going in this direction from left to right. So this is going to be the trailer just here. And then we're going to have the car just here. So let's put some information on. The car has a mass of 300 kilograms. I could put the weight acting down and the normal reaction force, but in this particular model, I'm simply going to consider now the forces acting in the horizontal plane. We've got now resistance to motion, so let's go ahead and put that on. And on here, we've got now a total of 400 newtons. So if I just put that up, so we have 400 newtons in the opposite direction. The opposite direction to the driving force, so we've got the driving force, and the driving force is going to be in the motion or the, the direction from T to C. So we'll say that that is going to be 5,000 newtons. And we're going to have some acceleration, and that acceleration I'm just going to define to be A meters per second squared. So that now is the acceleration of the car. So A meters per second squared. If we now go ahead and look at the trailer, the trailer has a mass of 100 kilograms. The resistance to motion is going to be 200 newtons, which is going to be opposing the motion. So we're moving from T to C, or in that direction, TC. So if we put this on, we've got 200 newtons. I could, of course, again, put the normal reaction on and the weight acting downwards. So what we've got here is a light tow bar. I'm going to put this on and we're going to model this up. Now if I do that, what we're going to have is equal tension in this. We can use Newton's third law. If we have now a tension in the tow bar, we can say that the trailer is pulled by the car by this value of T and the trailer exerts an equal and opposite force T, which is the tension, on the car. So in this particular scenario, what I have is some unknown, and I've called this the trailer, let's just put TR so we don't uh, mistake this. This force here is T, and we're also going to have T in the opposite direction. So the trailer is pulled by the force of tension, and it exerts an equal and opposite force of T on the car. That's just Newton's third law. So this is what we've got going on. As you can see from this model, we have two unknowns. We have the unknown of tension and we have the unknown of acceleration. We know from algebra that we need at least two equations to solve if we have two unknowns. The way we get around this is to consider three different scenarios. We consider this as a system moving along a straight line in the same direction. So these are moving in the same direction along a straight line. We can then consider the forces acting on the trailer only and the forces acting on the car only. When we have a system, we say that these are internal forces and they cancel each other out. When we then consider each of these, so the car, 
and the trailer, they become external forces. So what I'm going to do is look at this as a system. If we consider the acceleration a meters per second squared of the car, that will also be the acceleration of the trailer as we've got now this light tow bar here and we can simply apply a to both. So what I'm going to do is draw up the system. So we call this a system, so just put a line here and we will model this up. So my system is going to become the combined mass of the two. So if we put this on, let's just write now, this is the system. So just here we'll say the system. So the system, we know that the combined mass is going to be 400. So if I consider the combined mass, we got 400. I'm not going to look at any forces in the vertical plane as we don't need them for this particular problem and it's just going to clutter my diagram. Again, if you want to put the normal reaction and the weight acting down, you can do. The combined resistance now to the motion is going to be the sum of the 200 and 400 and that is going to give me now 600. We can ignore now T because this becomes an internal force. All we've got is the driving force. The driving force is going to be in the direction from left to right. And we can say that that is going to be now 5,000. We have the acceleration. The acceleration is A meters per second squared. So if we now look at this, this is my system and I've combined the two. So these are now the forces acting on the system. We've got 5,600 and this is a meters per second squared. So using Newton's second law, NTL, force is equal to mass times acceleration, as we've seen in all of the other videos. So from here, I can resolve this in the direction of the acceleration, and I can say that 5,000 minus 600 will be equal to the mass, which is 400, multiplied by the acceleration, which is a. So cancelling off, we can go ahead and divide. So we're going to have now 50. So 50 minus 6 is equal to 4a. So from here, we can see now that 44. So 44 over 4 is going to be equal to a. And we get quite a, a nice acceleration there of 11 meters per second squared. So that will give me my acceleration. Um, I've just picked numbers. Quite clearly, when we do some uh, examples later on, they will be slightly, um, slightly easy, well, more realistic. Okay, so that's what we've got just here. So that's given us our acceleration, and we can now consider the uh, particles individually. So what I'm going to do is look at the trailer. So we're going to look at the forces acting on the trailer, and we can look at the forces acting on the car. These internal forces of the system now become external forces for each of these separately. When you come to solve problems involving now the, uh, the external forces, you can consider either one. So I'll do these at the same time. So what we're going to have then is the car and the trailer. So this is going to be the car. So if we look now at the forces acting on these, what we're going to have is the following. So this now, let's put the trailer just there. We're going to still have the 200 newtons, so the 200 newtons will be in that direction. We're going to have the tension in this direction, and then we can apply the acceleration that we found that is applicable for each of these particles. If it's applicable for the system, it's applicable for each particle. So if we look now, the information that we've got is we have 200, so 200 newtons is opposing the motion. We've got a mass of 100, and we've got some tension in this coupling right here, or the tow bar, and we can put on that this is going to be 11 meters per second squared. So from this, we can see now that this is a straightforward Newton's second law, NTL, in the direction of the motion, or the acceleration, if you like. F is equal to MA for the trailer, which I put now in my workings for trailer. So let's do that. We can say that T minus 200 will be equal to 100 multiplied by the acceleration, which is 11. So what's that give us? 1100, so the tension is going to be equal to 1300 newtons. So that's what we end up with, and we can solve now for T.
So that's how I get my second equation. These are in a straight line. T is going to be equal to T, and we go ahead and solve. Now, just on this one, we were speeding up here. If we were going in the opposite direction, or we were slowing down, so if there was some braking force, because we don't have a braking force on the trailer, we would end up with the scenario where we had thrust. So what we've got now is tension is acting inwards, thrust would be opposing the motion here, and there'd be an equal and opposite on the car. So this would be the scenario where we've got thrust, so if a braking force was applied here, rather than a driving force, we would have something pushing now the, um, the trailer back to ensure that it reduces its speed. Okay, let's just go ahead and show that we could have chosen any of these from here. So this is what we've got here. This is going to be the car. So if we put on the driving force, that's the driving force. We've got now the forces that are opposing the motion. So we've got this one right here. And we've also got another one because we've got tension. So if we look at that one right there, what we've got on here now is the driving force. So we know the driving force is going to be 5,000. We've got T, which is this one, and we've got now the resistance motion of 400. So let's put that there. So that's 400. We said the mass of this was 300, and we can use the acceleration, which is this one just here. So let's just do a straight copy with that, and we'll move that down. Let's go there, and we've got 11 meters per second squared. So if we did this one, we could say NTL for the car. So NTL for the car. We can see there's only one unknown. It's just slightly trickier to do this one but again it's entirely up to you so four car so four car so what we'll say then is 5000 minus t minus 400 will be equal to 300 that's the mass multiplied by the acceleration so if we do this, adding t to both sides and then subtracting uh, all of the numeric values, what we're going to have is 5,000 minus 400, and then we're going to have minus 3,000. What's that going to give me? 3,300 will be equal to t. So from here, we can see that 5,000 minus the, what are we going to have on here? Uh, 3,000, uh, let's just work this out, 3,300. Uh, what, what's that going to give me in total? So that's minus 3,700. Uh, that's going to give us the 1,300 that we were hoping for. Um, so there we go. Just make sure you don't... Uh, and that's Newton's again. So we can see how splitting it up does that. So if we got these two particles moving in a straight line now, and we've got this coupling or tow bar between them, we can simply use the system. We can see these as... X, uh, internal forces for the system, which cancel out, and then apply them as external. So at this stage right here, T is internal. Okay, so when we have it here, yet here, T is going to be external. And T will be external right here for this one here. So T is external. So that's how we approach these problems. So let's have a go at one of these. And sometimes, as I say, sometimes we'll get tension, sometimes we'll get thrust. So, a car of mass 1,500 kilograms is towing a trailer of mass 500 kilograms along a straight horizontal road. The car and the trailer are connected by a light inextensible tow bar. So, light inextensible means that we're going to have equal acceleration and we're going to have equal tension. The engine of the car exerts a driving force of magnitude 10,000 newtons and the car and trailer experience resistances of magnitudes 3,000 newtons and 1,000 newtons respectively. We need to find the acceleration of the car and the tension in the tow bar. So pretty much what we've just done. So let's just model this up and what we can do is put these on. So we've got a 1,500 and often you'll be asked to find some of the other uh, features. So don't always think that it's going to be a case that you have to find uh, the tension or the acceleration. You might have to find uh, other unknowns given the tension and the acceleration. So if we put this on, what we're going to have is the following. Let's just put this on. So this is now considering each of these. We've got a driving force. So let's put the driving force on here. So that's your driving force. We're going to have now the resistance on each of these. So that's going to look something like that. And that's going to look something like that. You can put it there, of course. Um, I'm just putting it here because we've got the tension. 
and we can go ahead and put some values on. Again, if you want to put the normal reaction forces on here and the weight acting down, you can do. So this one now, this is going to be my car, so I'm going from left to right, 1500. So we'd have 1500 G and R. We've got now 500. We know that the driving force is going to be one, what have we got, 10,000? 10, 10,000. We've got the resistances to motion, so this one is going to be 3,000. This one is going to be 1,000. We have tension and we have tension and we're going to have some acceleration and I generally call that A meters per second squared. So these are the forces acting on each of the particles. So if you wanted, what you could do is just at this stage, you could say, well, I've got this scenario. Let's just do that. That is a snapshot of what's happening with this acceleration on the trailer. And if you want a snapshot of this one right here, let's do that one. These are the forces acting now on the car. So if you want to look at it like that, I suppose that's quite a nice way of looking at it. You could do it like so. All I'm going to do at this stage is model up now a system. So the tension becomes an internal force and cancels out. So let's do our system. This is going to be my system. We'll have the forces opposing motion. We will have the driving force we will have the acceleration, which I've defined to be A, and that will be consistent throughout, and we can go ahead and put the information on. So this is going to be A. We have now the 10,000, so 10,000. We have now the uh, 4,000, so that's going to be opposing motion. It's just the sum of the two forces opposing motion, and this is going to be 2,000. So from here, we can go ahead and use Newton's second law for the system. NTL, F is equal to MA for system. So just writing this down for system, and we can go ahead and solve. So resolving now in the direction of acceleration, we can say now that uh, 10,000, so 10,000 minus 4,000 will be equal to the mass, which is 2,000 combined mass multiplied by A. So if we just go ahead and cancel these off, we can say from here now that 10 minus 4 is equal to 2a. So what's that going to give us? 6 over 2, 6 over 2, a is going to be equal to 3. So the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, and that's now in the direction of the, uh, from left to right, if you want a, b. So that's the acceleration. When you're doing these, you don't always have to find one before the other. With these particular examples, it's obviously easier to do that. But when the question comes up, especially with certain connected particles, you can solve as you wish. OK, so let's now apply this. And I can, of course, use now the A meters per second squared. T has gone from, uh, begun, well, I should say, gone from an internal to an external force. So all I'm going to write here now is for trailer, so for trailer, we've got now NTL, Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. So I'm going to have now T minus 1000 will be equal to 500, and then we're going to have A. Well, we know that A is going to be free. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So from here, we can see now that T minus 1000 will be equal to 1500. So T is going to be equal to 2500 newtons. That gives me the tension in the tow bar. We could of course done it for the other one. If I quickly do it for the other one, we're going to have 10,000. So 10,000 minus T minus 3000 will be equal to 1500. And then we can have A, well we know that's three. So that's going to give me on here seven, and I'll just do it step by step. 7,000 uh, is going to be equal to 4,500 plus T. So I'm just calculating this here so we can see now that I could have considered either of those. So 2,500 Newtons is equal to T. Clearly, I'm going to favour in this particular case the trailer because I've got slightly less work to do because I've not got T and the 3,000. Um, 
but again, entirely up to you. So that's just using Newton's third law. If we're being towed by the car, the trailer now is being pulled along by force T, therefore it exerts an equal and opposite force T on the car. Right, let's have a look at another one. Okay, so this time we've got a van, so it's got a mass of 900 kilograms uh, and it's towing a trailer of mass 500 kil kilograms up a straight road which is inclined to the horizontal at an angle alpha where tan alpha is 0 0.75. The van and the trailer connected by a light inextensible tow bar. The engine of the van exerts a driving force of magnitude 12k newtons and the van and trailer we uh, experience resistances of motion, uh, resistances to motion of magnitude 1600 newtons and 600 newtons respectively. We're asked to find the acceleration of the van and the tension in the tow bar. So let's go ahead and model this up. So with your model, we're now on an inclined plane. We're told now that this angle right here, and I always like to work this out to begin with, we're told that we have an angle, so let's put this here, we have an angle which is going to be alpha. Now if tan alpha, and I'll just jot it down here, tan alpha is going to be equal to 0 0.75, that is 3 over 4. So if I just drew up a little right angle triangle, and we'll, we'll quickly do that, so with a right angle triangle, what I've got is the following. I've been told now that this is going to be 3 over 4, this is going to be alpha, that's tan alpha, so this is 5. That's a little Pythagorean triple. So we can see from here that sine alpha is going to be 3 fifths. And we can say that cos alpha, so cos alpha is going to be 4 fifths. So that we're going to use shortly. Let's just put these on. So let's go ahead and put these on and we'll just spin that round. So modeling this up, I'm going to do a couple of different uh, shots. The more confident you get, the less, uh, the less you'll have to do these all the time. I'm going to consider the following. So what I've got is now uh, the, the trailer uh, and we've got the van. So we're going to connect these. We've got a light inextensible uh, tow bar. So let's put that on and we'll model that up. So let's do that and just put that there and put that there. This now will be parallel to the plane, parallel to the ground. And it looks something like so. I'm going to put the masses on each of these. So we have a van of mass 900. So 900 is going to go here. So 900, and then we're going to have 500. This time, we do need to consider forces acting in the vertical plane. So I'm going to put on here that we've got T. We know we're going to have T. We know we're going to have T. We're going to have an acceleration. So let's put the acceleration. And the acceleration now is going to be consistent for both. And I'll put that on. I always like to call this A, so this is going to be A metres per second squared. So if we consider now the forces, we've got resistance to motion on here. So let's do that. Uh, let's just make that a little smaller. So we'll have now the resistance to motion on the trailer, and we will also have one now on the van. So that looks something like that. That will be parallel to the plane, and we'll have this one just here. So let's go ahead and put those on. If we put those on, what have we got on here? So this is going to be 1600, and then we've got 600. So 600 and 1600. If we now think about a driving force, the driving force is going to be on the van. So we can put the driving force just here. Again, that driving force will be modeled parallel to the plane. So let's do that, let's put that on. And that's going to be 12K. So that's 12,000 newtons, so 12,000 newtons. If we think now we're on an inclined plane, so we must consider the weight acting down for each of these. We'll have the weight acting down here, and we'll have the weight acting down, and we'll have now a normal reaction force for both. So if I put on the normal reaction forces, let's have these, and we'll have something like that. Now, in terms of the normal reaction for both of these, remember there is no acceleration in the vertical plane. So let's grab that. That's what I want. I want that one just here. And we can put these on. So if I look now, we've got the weight acting down. So this is going to be 500. So that's 500 G. This one is going to be 900 G. I'm going to say that this will be R1 and this is going to be R2. So that's what we have.
So what we need to do first, so this is what we've got. That looks to be all of the information that we need. We need to start off by finding the acceleration of this. So what I'm going to do is model this up and I'm going to model this as a system. So if we look at this as a system, so let's go ahead and put that on. I'm simply going to use now one big particle. I always like to switch it over to a circle. That's completely, uh, big. I just find it easier. You certainly don't have to. We're going to have the weight acting downwards. We're going to have the driving force. So this is for the system. And at this stage, we see the tension as internal forces rather than external forces acting on each of these. So we'll have now the resistances to motion, which will be on here. So let's just make that smaller and spin that into place. We'll have the resistances to motion. We will have now, let's put this on, we will have now a normal reaction force. So if you have a normal reaction force, normal reaction force perpendicular to the plane. We will have now a meters per second squared. So let's just copy that. And that can go just there. So we have this angle right here. So let's put the angle on. We've got an angle of alpha. So angle just here, that is going to be alpha. We have a combined mass of 1400. That's simply the 500 and the 900. We're going to have this force right here. I'm just gonna call this R. I call these R1 and R2. I'll just call this one R. This is going to be the weight acting down 1400 G Newtons. We have a 12,000, so 12,000 Newton driving force. And the combined resistance to this motion are the 600 and the 1600, which gives me 2200 or 2200 newtons. So this is the model that we've got. If we look at it, I've just combined the masses. I've combined the weight acting down and we need to solve. Remember here, we're dealing with an inclined plane, so we need to be careful. So what I'm going to do is write Newton's second law for the system. So NTL, so NTL for system, so for system. So if we look at the uh, Newton's second law for system, and I'm going to be resolving now in the direction of the acceleration, or if you like, up the plane, we can say that 12,000, so that is pulling up, minus now 2,200, and we're going to have on here, from here, we're going to have minus now the weight acting down. So what we've got to consider, let's just put this on, 2,200 minus, and this is the weight acting down. This is opposing motion. This is 1,400 G sine alpha. So that's what we've got just there. Remember, I've just split this up into the horizontal and vertical components of this force. And this, remember, is 1400 G. This is alpha, as we've seen in our previous work. So if we look at the force now acting down the plane, this is the hypotenuse at 1400 G. We've got the angle just here. Therefore, it's the sine. So let's go ahead and write this out. This now, we've got a value for sine alpha, and that is the three-fifths. So this will be equal to the mass. So that's going to be equal to mass, which is 1400 multiplied by the acceleration. F is equal to MA, Newton's second law for system. So we could, of course, tidy some of this up and make our life slightly easier. We can divide now by, what can we divide? We can take off. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do much simplifying. Let's just knock off a couple of, uh, let's take off those. So we'll uh, divide each of these by 100. Um, to make our life slightly easier. So we got 120 minus 22, and then we're going to have minus 14 G. Remember G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we've got sine alpha, which we found to be three fifths, and that is 14 A. So if I divide that by 14, I'm going to find the acceleration. So this looks a bit messy, but hopefully we can calculate it from here. So what I'm going to have then is for 120 minus 22 minus now 14. And I'm just hoping, if I have made a slight error, I apologise. Uh, hopefully that should make sense. 14 times by 9.8 multiplied by the 3 fifths, which is 0 0.6, so 0 0.6. And then we're going to divide this now by 14. 
So dividing by 14, that will give me the acceleration 28 over 25, which is quite nice. 28 over 25 meters per second squared is the acceleration. So that now is what I get from that. Um, so let's just check I've done this right. 12,000 minus 2,200 is equal, uh, sorry, minus 1,400 G sine alpha must be equal to 1,400 A. We solved for the acceleration. So now we need to find the tension in the tow bar. So if we look at this right now, I could just go ahead and just consider the forces acting on either one of these. So if I just, let's just move that into place and we'll put that just here. So I've just gone ahead and found A, so let's put that on. And I can, can simply consider the forces acting on this particular um, this particular particle, or in case you want to say the trailer. So if we look at this, let's go ahead. So what I'm going to do here is write now NTL for trailer. So Newton's second law for trailer. This is going to give me now all of the information I need to solve for the tension in the tow bar. So what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have T minus 600 minus 500 G and then we're going to have sine alpha. So that's sine alpha is equal to the mass which is 500 multiplied now by the acceleration which we found to be on here 28 over 25. So 28 over 25. That will now allow me to solve at this stage for T. So T is going to be equal to 600. We're going to have now plus 500 G sine alpha. We know that sine alpha is going to be 3 fifths. Plus we're going to have this 500 multiplied now by the 28 over 25. So let's go ahead and put that through a calculator. So just checking all of this, that looks pretty good. So let's do in the calculator, let's write this out. So we got 600 plus now 500. I suppose I can simplify this if I really wanted. 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.6. The 5 and the 500 will cancel, of course. And exactly the same with this one right here. So, uh, and then we're going to add to that now 500. 500 multiplied by that fraction we found, which is 28 over 25. That gives me my acceleration. And this should now find us the value of T. That's a nice clean number. T is going to be equal to 4,100 Newtons. Well, is that legit? Well, based on what we've done, we could go ahead and do this one right here. So I'll quickly do this one. We're going to have 12,000 minus 900 G sine alpha minus now the 1,600 minus T will be equal to 900 multiplied by A, which is going to give us the acceleration on here, which we saw was 28 over 25. So I split this up into components. I did now the trailer. This is Newton's second law for the van, which I'm just about to do. So from here, let's see if we can, uh, if I can be a bit cheeky, just put this all through a calculator. What we're gonna have then is the following. I'm just gonna add T to both sides and subtract this quantity. So what we're going to have is 12,000. So 12,000 minus 900, G, which is 9.8, multiplied by sine alpha, which is 0 0.6. We're then going to subtract from that 1600. Then we're going to subtract now, so hopefully this works, hopefully my maths is going to stack up, 900 times by the 28 over 25. Um, this should give us hopefully exactly the same, we're solving for T, which gives us 4100. So that works out nicely, all I've done is gone ahead and considered that one. So that's 4,100 newtons. So you can see by considering either uh, the, the, the trailer or the van, we could have done it. So we see it as a system with the T's cancelling, and then we go on to solve by using uh, either this one or this one. And again, if you look at what I've done here, I just took a snapshot. Let's do that. I took a snapshot of this instead of as a system as a separate particle. So I took all of this right here 
and that was what I saw. I saw this force, I saw that one, that one, I saw the 12,000, and I saw this acceleration which we had. So, quite an involved question because we've got an inclined plane and we've got weight acting down the plane and also we've got connected particles. So you would be awarded quite a few marks of that question. Okay, let's have a look at another question. It says a car of mass 900 kilograms is towing a trailer of mass 300 kilograms along a straight horizontal road. The car and the trailer are connected by a light inextensible tow bar and when the speed of the car is 20 meters per second, the brakes are applied. This produces a braking force of 2,400 newtons. We're asked to find A, the deceleration of a car, B, the magnitude of the force in the tow bar, and C, the distance travelled by the car before it stops. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got. So as per usual, we're just going to model this up. So we have now a car, and we'll put this on. So this is going to be our car, and then we will have now a trailer so the trailer now this time what we're going to have is thrust in the, the tow bar so we'll put this on and it'll look something like so so what we've got then is now the two uh, what we've got a braking force of 2400 newtons with this acceleration you can put it on in either direction if i put it on in this direction we're going to end up now with a negative value which kind of makes sense. It's it's fairly reasonable to think that. So I'm going to put now that we have this one, which is going to be uh, the 300. So this is going to be the trailer, 300. This is going to be 900. I will call this A meters per second squared. I will call this one, as we've got 2,400 newtons, and we've got some thrust in the tow bar. So let's have a look at what we've got. At this stage, we can simply go ahead and use now the, the model of a system. So let's get rid of that, don't need that, and we will model this up. So what I'm gonna do is model this as a system. And if we look at the system, we can put this on. So again, we're not going to be considering any, uh, any forces in the vertical direction with this. So just writing this out, this is our system. So let's put our system and we will look at the information. So as soon as this becomes a system, this, uh, these uh, T's in, uh, become internal forces and not external. So we've got 1,200. We've got now the 2,400. So let's put this on. And you'll see shortly when I said you can decide on how you want to go with this. We're going to have that like so, and then we're going to have now the A meters per second squared. So what we'll see is if we put this on, so let's go ahead. We've got now 2,400, and we'll do that. So if you like, you want, might want to go the other way. What I'm going to do is use Newton second law F is equal to MA for the system. So this now is the system. So what we've got then is now, we've got this minus 2,400. And of course, we've got nothing in this direction as the driving force has been taken off, and now we've got a braking force. So before we had some driving force, the braking force is now in the opposite direction. And that will be equal to the mass, which is going to be 1,200, combined mass, 1,200, and then we're going to have A. So from this, dividing both sides by 1,200, we can see that A is going to be equal to negative 2 metres per second squared. So that now is the acceleration. So the deceleration, D, is going to be equal to positive 2 metres per second squared. Remember, deceleration is now negative acceleration. We now need to find the magnitude of the force in the tow bar. So we can consider either now the trailer or the car. So if I looked at the trailer now, remember we can apply the, the value that we found for the uh, A, or we could go ahead and just consider from here now this particle right here, which is the car. I always like to work with the easier one, so what we're going to have is the following. Now think about this reasonably. What I can do is put in that A is equal to negative 2. So if you want to switch your directions, you can do. I'm going to say now negative T will be equal to the mass, which is 300, multiplied now by the acceleration, which is negative 2. So we can see that T is equal to 600 newtons. If we'd gone the other way, what we would have had this time is T minus the 2,400, this is for the car. So I'm doing NTL, Newton's second law here for the trailer, so for the trailer, and I'm doing here Newton's second law for now the car. 
So T minus that, uh, the 2,400, will be equal to 900, on there, so 900 multiplied by the acceleration, which is negative 2. So what we can see is that this is going to be 2,400, adding the 2,400 to both sides. And then we're going to have from here minus 1,800. So we can see that the thrust is going to be 600 newtons. I always like to double check. Um, if you've got some time, if you're doing this in an exam, do check it out. Okay, so that's done. Nice and straightforward. So the magnitude of the force in the tow bar, that's going to be 600 newtons. We now need to find the distance travelled by the car before it stops. All we're doing here is going back to the constant acceleration equations, SUVAT. So if we take the information that we've got now in the question, we've got an initial speed of 20. If it comes to rest, it will be a zero velocity at the end. And we've got the acceleration of negative 2. So find the distance. All we need to do is use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. 0 will be equal to 20 squared, which is 400. Then we're going to have minus 2 times by 2 times by S, which is the displacement or the distance. So what's that going to give me? 100. Um, S is going to be 100 meters. So all I've done is use the information and take an acceleration or deceleration from this part right here and put it in. So quite a nice question, something slightly different because we're using thrust, but hopefully that gives you some idea on how you can deal with these. We treat it as a system where those tensions or thrust become internal forces and cancel out so we can ignore them. And then we split it back up into either the trailer or the car and use Newton's second law to find the other unknown. If you're stuck with two unknowns and one equation, you're not going to be able to solve it, so think of the ways that you can get around it.